guys, welcome to Beyond Science 2. I'm your host, Jasmina. Throughout the course of human history, civilizations have periodically clashed and declared war on each other because of territorial disputes, political ideologies, and religious beliefs. Sometimes, however, there are conflicts that sprung out of ludicrous reasons. Reasons that could have been avoided or immediately resolved without the need of having to bear arms and lose hundreds, if not thousands, of lives. That is why in today's list, we are going to count down to five of history's most unbelievably ridiculous wars that were fought. At number five, we have the Flagstaff War. In 1840, British forces who were stationed at New Zealand decided to host the Union flag over a small town called Korokoreka. The town was known for its seedy establishments and shady characters. Thinking that no one would mind, the British proceeded to let their colors fly as a sign of their presence over the country. However, a tribal chief named Honoheki rode into a small town and chopped down the flagpole because of his strong distaste toward the presence of the British Empire, who had turned the entire island country into to their colony. You would think that the British would just let it go, but instead the garrison elected to put up another flag which was then taken down by Honoheki. This happened for about two more times where the final flag staff was reinforced with an iron base. In a much more forward thinking time, the issue would have been settled domestically, but because the British in those days were intent on reinforcing their sovereignty over their colonies, that the House of Commons back home declared the Honoheki and his people were a nuisance and were needed to be taught a lesson. Initially, the House of Commons Commons ordered missionaries to be sent to speak to Honoheki. And when that failed, Honoheki and his tribe descended into a small town in 1845 to drive out the British, taking a few innocent lives along the way. The British were eventually kicked out of Korokoreka and their flag was taken down once more. Later on, the British returned with more troops and firepower that ultimately ended the rebelling tribes people after 10 months of bloody skirmish. The British remained in the territory but never dared to fly their colors over the small town once again. Next up, we have the War of the Oaken Bucket. In Italy, 1325, one of the most senseless wars was fought because people were simply trying to find a good excuse to shed some blood and kill each other. The rival city-states of Modena and Bologna were constantly in conflict because of their religious loyalties. The people of Modena paid devotion to the Holy Roman Emperor and the people of the Bolognese opted to back and support the Pope. During this time of the Catholic Church schism, believers were constantly at odds with other people who did not share their faith. But unlike the Holy Wars, and the great political conspiracies that enveloped the schism, what happened between Modena and Bologna was more deserving to be in a National Lampoon movie than in the history books. One day, soldiers from Modena, for some strange reason, decided to steal a bucket from a well in a Bolognese town. This sparked outrage among the people of Bologna and they began to mobilize their troops because they needed to get the bucket back no matter what. Unfortunately for the Bolognese army, which numbered at least 30,000 soldiers, they were pushed back and routed by the 7,000 men Modena garrison and thousands lost their lives all because of a stolen bucket. To this day, the fabled bucket is being kept in Modena on public display as a way of mocking their ancient rivals. Number three, the War of Dahis. Cheating in any form is frowned upon in any culture, but having to declare war is kind of a stretch. In the year 568, the 40 year feud between two Arabian tribes began because of allegations of cheating during a horse race. Dahis was the name of a horse from which the feud got its namesake and was owned by a king from one of the tribes. During the race, when Dahis was extremely close to winning the race, warriors from the opposing tribe allegedly forced the steed off its course and leading it to lose the race. The king who owed Dahis demanded that his money he bet on a scallion be returned because of the turnout and because he sensed shenanigans. The other tribe refused to return the money and insisted that they won fair and square. When the king sensed that his money was never going to be returned, he ordered his people to start killing people from the other tribe. Not to be intimidated by murder, murder and homicide, the rival tribe began killing off the king's men and tribe's people. The conflict spiraled out of control and transformed into decades-long war, costing thousands of lives. Next up, we have the Pig War. It would seem that animals play an integral part in ridiculous wars throughout history. Coming in at number two is the aptly named Pig War. Don't think that this is just a small shuffle between two nations because in 1859, the Pig War was a full-scale war. During that time, the United States and Great Britain laid claim to a chunk of land in San Juan, just between the coast of Vancouver and the U.S. mainland. On the island was a small presence of American settlers who had called it home as well as the employees of the Hudson Bay Company who were from the British Isles. The first shot of the war rang out on June 15, 1859, when an American farmer shot a black boar dead after discovering that the animal had been feasting on his potato patch. Unfortunately for the farmer, the black boar was owned by the British settlers on the island. After tensions soared and the farmer was threatened with arrest, the whole incident 
incident reached the ears of the mainland and the US Army dispatched a captain named George Pickett together with a small band of troops. Pickett declared the entire island of San Juan as US property and to no surprise at all, it did not please the British who, in turn, sent a naval fleet of heavily armed ships to the coastline. A standoff similar to the Cold War ensued with everyone teetering on a knife's edge for weeks. Finally, the two nations brought the conflict to the negotiating table and agreed on a joint military occupation of San Juan. Though a bloody conflict did not erupt, it was one that had the potential to be destructive that one officer's finger slipped on a trigger. And finally at number one, we have the War of the Stray Dog. As one of the most outrageous military conflicts in the 20th century, the so-called War of the Stray Dog brought two nations who were already at odds against each other. Since the Balkan War in the 1910s, Greece and Bulgaria has already been at each other's throats and their relationship is strained to say the least. Tensions finally escalated and it escalated rapidly when a Greek soldier was shot dead after he was allegedly crossing the Bulgarian border because he was chasing after his runaway dog. It did not take much for the Greeks to rally their troops after the incident and they soon invaded Bulgaria and occupied several villages in the wake. The city of Petrich was bombarded with artillery shells and the conflict claimed the lives of 50 people until the League of Nations stepped in and forced the two nations at the negotiating table, where after learning of this misunderstanding, a ceasefire was proclaimed to put a stop to the ridiculous quarrel. So there you go, those are the five most ridiculous wars in history. I hope you enjoyed this episode and I'll see you next time. Bye!